So we're going to take a look at T distributions. And in this video, we are going to teach you a brand new chart. So please make sure to go to my resources and download from that Moodle page the T distribution chart. You'll also notice on the back side that there's another chart, but we're going to look at that during a different unit. So keep this T distribution chart in front of you because we're going to need it to get our T values that we're going to need for our EBM as we do our confidence intervals using smaller distributions. Now these smaller distributions, because um, we normally would use a z-chart and you learned how to use the z-chart in the last uh, video and seri series of videos, but we did confidence intervals previously and we basically made up a pretty simple rule. And this is again um, simplified for the level of the class that I'm teaching that we're going to use the z-chart when our sample size is greater than or equal to 30. If our sample size is not greater than or equal to 30, we're just going to default and use uh, t-distributions here. Now, um, when the sample size are smaller than 30, we're going to use the t-chart that I just showed you, and this chart is based on degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom for these problems will be the sample size minus 1. The sample size minus 1 basically allows you to use multiple pictures of curves or a family of curves that are based on sample size. Because what we're used to is we're used to this kind of if n was greater than or equal to 30, we would just use the normal curve created by the function that's listed in the book there and this would be you know easily findable with with you know an, uh, an zero standard deviations away from the norm this is your average and then you have your standard deviations on either side well for the family of curves here this essentially if you take a look at the chart has 1 through 29 now, the chart does go on uh, beyond that, but again, because I'm using kind of a simple uh, system of choosing which chart to use, um, I didn't actually print anything higher than this because it was really not necessary, because we're going to be dealing with small sample sizes. And with small sample sizes, check out these numbers here. You can see that these numbers are uh, pretty big, and we're going to see that in the hypothesis testing chapter. But you would read the left-hand column by the numbers of degrees of freedom. So if you had a 10 person group, then you'd have nine degrees of freedom because one of those 10 people would be um, the or, uh, true average by assumption and the other nine would be able to have the freedom to move about. So one person basically has to get the job done and the others can mess around. So if you have tw a sample of 21 pieces of data, you'd be at 20 degrees of freedom and you would use this row associated based on the degrees of freedom. Now in terms of the pictures that I'd like to talk to you about, this t-chart is a family of curves. Consider every single different degree of freedom as a different curve. So you can maybe think of a smaller distribution is going to be a little bit more wide, but there's more actual values here in the tails. This is an example of a t-curve and this t-curve has a normal distribution again with the average centered at zero standard deviations away from itself and standard deviations to the left and right. But what you'll notice that if we just kind of put two lines here and two lines here, you'll notice that on the normal curve there's actually less space in the tails whereas on a t-curve there's more space in the tails. And as the sample size gets closer to 30, this t-curve looks closer to this as n approaches 30. So we use the t-curves to be more statistically accurate with smaller sample sizes. And we use the z-curve when we have um, good normal distribution and we also have a robust uh, sample. So in this class, we're going to make things very, very straightforward. We are going for n is greater than 30, greater than or equal to 30. We're going to use the z-chart. But when n 
is less than 30, we're going to use the t-chart, which is again reason why I didn't print off the t-chart um, further than that. But moreover, I want to state that there are reasons that we could use the z-chart that, you know, if we have a sample size less than 30, and there may be reasons to, that we would use the t-chart if the n was greater than or equal to 30, but for this class we're going to make this distinction very binary. So, t-chart, if you're less than 30, z-chart, if you're greater than or equal to 30, by the simple reason that we have to adjust for very small sample sizes, and if we do have a very small sample size, we need to have a more robust um, way to test things and actually make sure that um, we're being statistically honest. Because what's going to happen with this t-chart is we're going to have wider confidence intervals and we're going to have higher criteria for rejecting the null hypothesis when we get to that in the um, next chapter. So let's learn about reading the t-chart here, okay? So let's read about the t-chart. Now, I have some partially filled in information, and what's great about this is we can kind of go back and forth and we can kind of see like, okay, if I give you the sample size of 10, what is the degrees of freedom? Well, we learned that degrees of freedom is our sample size minus one, so that is going to be nine, nine degrees of freedom. Now, in terms of our alpha, if our alpha is our error, so let's have a um, little reminder of what we were talking about in the previous video. If the alpha is the error, then the confidence level is going to be the percentage that is the complement of that error. So this error is like 10%. So the confidence level would be 90%. Okay. Now, we're going to look up our first table value. So we need to know two things. We need to know the degrees of freedom. We also need to know the confidence level. And to a lesser degree, a third thing, although it's going to be the same for every single time in this video, we need to know how many tails we have. And we're going to have two tails. And that's because our interval is going to have a low and a high number. And this sets up the bound of our interval. And so the low and the high number number is a good way to think of the, why you need two tails because you have kind of a give or take off of your x bar. So going back to the chart, we're going to use that information again. So we're going to have nine degrees of freedom. So I am going to be looking here at nine degrees of freedom. We are running, always running a two tail test. So we're always going to be in this row here. So we're not going to be in the one tail test, not until the next chapter. But in this two tail test, we are looking for an alpha of 0.1. Use the alpha that they give us. So if I go down from the 0.01 and across from the nine, it looks like my T alpha divided by two value is 1.833. Unlike the z-chart, where there's only 90, 95, and 99 for most of your problems, and a few others, but those are the standards, this cannot be easily just memorized or just put on a small chart. You'll have to use this based on the sample size, because there are literally dozens of values here, you know, from the small sample sizes that we could possibly have. So 1.833 is our t-value for our problem. In future chapters, we're going, to we're going to concern ourselves with positive or negative values of this based on the tail, but currently right now we just need to figure out what that value is. So you can see that I've kind of put things in different spaces in this next row, so you can kind of think backwards and think, you know, differently about this. So if I start off with 10 degrees of freedom, then that means my sample size is 11 because the degrees of freedom is always one fewer than the sample size. Now here the confidence level is 95% which means my alpha is going to be 5% or 0.05. I like to write my alpha in terms of decimals because that's how the T chart has it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look up 10 degrees of freedom at 0.05. 
So for using the chart, it looks like these two are going to be what you're going to really focus on. So 10 degrees of freedom at 0.05. 10 degrees of freedom at 0.05 is going to be here at 2.228 because here's my 0.05 and here's my 10 degrees of freedom. So put our T value here, 2.228. Okay, why don't you try filling out the next two? Pause the video, try it and then unpause to see how you did. Okay, so for this problem here, if you have 20 as your sample size, you have 19 degrees of freedom. If your error is 1%, then your confidence level is 99%. So at 19 degrees of freedom and 0 0.01 alpha error, or 1% alpha error, I'm going to be in this row here. So one, two, three, four, five, rows over. And down to 19 puts me at 2.861. That's 2.861 or right here, 19 degrees of freedom in this column. So 2.861. Now for this one I have 20 degrees of freedom which would put me at a sample size of 21 and my alpha error since I am at 80% um, confidence, which doesn't happen too often, but sometimes does, puts me at 0.2, or 0.20 to be a little stylistic. Well, 0.20 is the first row here, and so if I go down to 20 degrees of freedom, that puts me at 1.325, and that would be my score. Okay, so let's look at this. Formula for confidence interval for t-charts. Okay, so what we need to do is take a look at the formula for making an interval. So this is going to be x bar plus or minus the EBM. Now this looks familiar because this is the same setup for the last confidence interval for the z-chart. So we're now going to say our EBM, okay? Our EBM is equal to T alpha divided by two times the standard deviation. Now I used a lowercase letter s there, divided by the square root of the sample size. Now, if this looks mostly familiar, well, it should, because you just did um, confidence intervals on z-curves. So, or the z-chart, excuse me, not the z-curve, because that's just the normal curve. So it says, label parts of the formula and noble, no, sorry, note the similarities and differences between this and the z-chart formula. So you'll notice that everything I wrote in black is slightly different from the z-chart formula, because the z-chart formula had some distinctions. First of all, the most notable is it was the z alpha divided by 2, but here we're using the t alpha divided by 2. The second noticeable difference is that we have the standard deviation as a lowercase s instead of a lowercase sigma. Because as we saw on the calculator, the calculator had a standard deviation with an s x and also a standard deviation with lowercase sigma x. Now there's a distinction between the two of these. In the standard deviation formula, this sx uses the n minus 1 as a, divi a division, um, which, is, um, which is something we use for the smaller sample sizes. But as we said, we would divide only by n if our sample size was greater than or equal to 30. So for t-chart problems, this is going to be the standard deviation you're going to use on your calculator, whereas for z-charts, you would use this on your um, in your homework and calculator. And again, I'm making the choice very binary. So there isn't any inconsistencies and we don't have to dive deep into the philosophy of why we should use Bessel's correction for this and not for this. 
So please note the differences between Z and T. Obviously, if N, so let's just in summary before we finish this video, if N is greater than or equal to 30, use your Z chart. Normal curve. And lowercase sigma x on the calculator. Now, if you have n less than 30, use your t chart. That's a cursive letter t that kind of looks nice. Uh, use t curves. And again, you don't have pictures of all 30 t curves here, uh, but you're going to use this chart for that. And you're going to use the, cap the capital letter SX on the calc. So be sure to be able to easily switch between the two of these based on the sample size of your story problem. Sometimes that's not quite apparent, but it should be once you start getting the information. All right, thank you for watching.